Tens of thousands of migrants continue to be bused from the southern border to Chicago, and the Illinois governor has had enough. J.B. Pritzker says there is, quote, an untenable situation in his state. The Democrat sent a letter to President Biden outlining what the federal government should do to mitigate the growing migrant crisis, not just in Chicago, but also in other U.S. cities. Governor Pritzker says at least 15,000 asylum seekers have arrived in Chicago since August 2022. City data shows nearly 10,000 migrants are living in city shelters. For more on this, we go, as we always do, to CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoya-Galvez. Camilo, Governor Pritzker has been a longtime ally of the Biden administration, but he's not just the latest one to criticize the president's immigration policies. Why are we seeing more Democrats challenge the Biden administration on this issue? Well, John, the simple answer is that now this historic migration crisis along the U.S.-Mexico border is on full display in Democratic-led cities and states. That is the bottom line. Before, we saw mainly Republicans in Congress and across the country blame the Biden administration for this spike in illegal border crossings over the past two years. But now, increasingly, we are seeing Democrats also criticize President Biden's border strategy, especially those Democrats in cities like New York and Chicago and Denver that have really struggled, as you know, John, to house tens of thousands of migrants in need of shelter and who typically don't have family members here to take them in. And for now, we are seeing Democrats like Eric Adams in New York say that President Biden has abandoned the city on this issue. The governor of that state has said that the U.S.-Mexico border currently is too open. And now we have the governor, the governor rather, of Illinois saying that the Biden administration has, in many ways, created an untenable situation in Chicago and his state because of its inaction from his point of view on this issue. And what is bad news for this administration, John, is that these concerns from local Democrats are likely to intensify. In September alone, Border Patrol recorded more than 200,000 illegal border crossings. That is the highest level reported in 2023, and that's according to data obtained by CBS News. So, Camilo, the governor sent a list of demands. What's on that list? Demands from the White House. That's right. The governor of Illinois is saying that the Biden administration should be distributing additional funds to Chicago and the state so these communities can assist and shelter additional migrants. He is also asking the Biden administration to create some changes to allow asylum seekers to obtain work authorization more quickly so they can stop relying on local services. As you remember, the Biden administration, John, recently granted temporary protective status to nearly half a million Venezuelans. But these migrants still have to apply for the work permits under this program. And so the governor is saying that the administration should expedite and fast track those applications. And lastly, just like the governor of New York and the mayor of New York City, the governor of Illinois is saying that the administration should really take charge and oversee the transportation of migrants released from federal custody so these migrants settle in places beyond major cities like New York and Chicago. And in their view, that would also undercut that effort by Texas Governor Greg Abbott to bus migrants to Democratic led cities, including New York and Chicago. Of course, then that puts the challenge to the Biden administration. Where do you put them? Where do you move them to? What has the Biden administration response been to this list of demands, or what is it likely to be? Well, the Biden administration, in a statement, has said that it has already dispatched close to a billion in additional funds to cities and states and groups sheltering migrants, those in the interior, but also along the U.S.-Mexico border. It is, however, important to note that that allocation is funded by Congress. So for the administration to distribute additional aid, Congress would need to approve such a request. Additionally, the administration is saying that it is increasing deportations of migrants who cross into the U.S. illegally and who don't ask for asylum or who fail their initial humanitarian screenings. But the bottom line, John, is that the problems facing these cities and states will continue to be a major issue while crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border continue at these historically high levels. Most Democrats are not saying that publicly, but I think privately they acknowledge that the systems, both at the federal and local levels, 
are not designed to manage and accommodate these unprecedented right. flows of people. And then quickly, as a last question, Camilo, American politicians aren't the only ones criticizing the president for his immigration policies. On Monday, Mexican President Lopez, Lopez Obrador said U.S. foreign policy in Latin America is to blame for the rise in Cuban and Venezuelan migrants. What does he mean, and does he have a point? Well, the Mexican president is essentially arguing, John, that U.S. sanctions against Cuba and Venezuela are driving migrants to come to the U.S. because they are somehow influencing the deteriorating conditions in these countries. That is also an argument that some in Congress, the more progressive Democrats, are making. But I think the Biden administration would argue, John, that the deteriorating conditions in these countries like Cuba, Venezuela, are primarily the result of the mismanagement and repressive policies of these governments, not U.S. sanctions. So I don't believe that they will change course on this issue. Lifting those sanctions, John, would also anger Republicans, moderate Democrats, and, importantly, Venezuelan and Cuban voters in Florida. Camilo Montague-Alvez breaking it down in all kinds of different ways. Thanks, Camilo. Thanks, John.